Okay, welcome to our show, Soccer Talk. I'm Coach Deaton. Coach Kame. We are so excited for this show. We've got a lot to talk about. So those of you that are viewing, I think we have six now that are like <laughs> our, our, our faithful viewers. Uh, we're gonna get right into it because we have so much. So what's this about Messi being threatened? Well, you know, it's funny because it, it's a poli uh, politics thing that we, we don't like to talk about politics in this show, but it, this thing had to do with politics. You know, it was we were, uh, Argentina playing um, Israel uh, he was threatened, the Palestinian didn't like them playing Argentina, so they threatened Messi, and so the game ended up being canceled, which was their last warm-up game right before the World Cup. So it's a big deal yeah. for them not having that game. Yeah. Yeah, so. I mean, it, it, the only advantage really is no injuries. Right, exactly. So, so that's a good thing. Right. Um, but yeah, we, we as soccer fans, really don't understand why it has to get involved with the game. The right, politics. exactly. Especially when you have the 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 uh, football associations or, or federations from other countries, you know, why do they have to put up with, uh, I mean, why do they have to bring in the politics into yeah. the World Cup, you know, yeah. which it happens all the time and we hate to see it, but you know, every once in a while it'll happen. Yeah. And you know, and I saw a picture of uh, Messi and the rest of the Argentinian team on the on their jet on their way to Russia. They look excited. They look happy. So there was no big deal to them. They just didn't have that last game. That's the professionalism. You just gotta continue to go through it. Right. Okay. So another shocker was Zidane stepping down from Real Madrid. I mean, I, I know <laughs> he didn't win the league, but he won three Champions League titles in three right. years. And I think one of the biggest person being shocked was the owner, Florentino Perez, who said he didn't even know. You know, he found out like the day before the press conference, he, he uh, called him and told him that he was going to step down. And he said he was shocked. He wasn't expecting that. So it's amazing how, you know, someone like Zidane, after what he had, you know, going in three championships, something that hasn't been done in a long time, uh, three Champions League finals and, and winning them all and, you know, stepping down right after. You know, what, a few days right after that yeah. final? Yeah, and, so. and you know, who knows what he's going to do at this point, if he's going to take a year off or something. Well, he said, uh, I read some place where he's, he was talking about not uh, being in a rush to right. find another club, but he's not done with coaching. He says he loves co coaching still. Yeah, he, just, still he just thinks that uh, Real needs change to keep winning. He thinks that Real Madrid is one of those teams that should be winning all the time. Right. So, you know, that's his view of the of him leaving the, uh, the the club all right okay so man united we got <laughs> two new signings fred from brazil and the lot from portugal and guess what they're both injured <laughs> and it was funny because right now we just discovered one of them is even on crutches right now which yeah. is a lot yeah so. there's a picture of the lot on crutches just yesterday it's like this, this was what I was talking about. Right. When you sign players before a World Cup, now Delot's not playing for the World Cup, but Fred is, and that's how he got injured. Now they're saying that it's just an ankle and he should be okay, so who knows how long that's gonna be. Right. But that's the risk you take. You right. sign them and if they get a major injury and they're out for half of a year or more, right. then you've wasted all that money. Yeah. I mean, I like that we signed them, but that's the risk you take signing them early. Exactly. Now, how much, you know, Fred being injured if he misses one or two games is Brazil. Come yeah. on, they they they've got a handful of players that could easily step right. in. Right. So. But he's got time. You yeah, know. yeah. You got the World Cup, and so he's got time to recruit. Yeah. Hopefully, and it's nothing, you know, where he can't come back before the beginning of the season. Yeah, hopefully. And so, Delot's young. So those right. of you that don't know Delot, I mean, he's only 19. Right. Okay, he played in Portugal, but he's a he's an outside defender. So there, I'm assuming that Mourinho's going to use him in right. place of Young and Valencia right. to spell some time. Right. I, I don't know if he'll start over those guys, but who knows. But when you're 19, you know, you get injured, you're back in a week or two. <laughs> right. You know, it's not like us, you know, who will take two years to get ready or to get back. <laughs> Okay, so our next uh, major topic was Although, Arsenal. I, well, yeah, exactly. I was going to say if we just go to that one because yeah. we talked to Man U. Yeah. Arsenal signing in um, Stefan, I can't pronounce his name, Lechsteiner. Lechsteiner. 
A 34-year-old. Come on, Coach. What? I know. I know. <laughs> and you know what? I, I see it. Um, maybe they're thinking, okay, we need some uh, experienced players because they have a bunch of young players coming in. So maybe that's what they're saying. I mean, but he's coming from Juventus, which is, you know, one of the top teams right now. Right. And he's been there for seven years. Like you said, though, he's 34 years old. So hopefully, you know, he's bringing some of that experience to Arsenal. Especially I mean, having a new, a new, new coach, new coach. And everything. So how how he's gonna hand, at 34, you know, one of the biggest differences. If you don't know the differences between some of the leagues, right? The EPL. One of the reasons why it's such a hard league is because of the weather. Right. Exactly. You know, uh, the other leagues are the weather's not as strong. Right. It's not as cold. So right. that's why they can play so many more games. Exactly. But a 34 year old, I mean. If he gives them two decent years, yeah, I guess, you know, okay. Emery's got a three-year contract, three right? Three-year, yeah. So I guess, okay, you bring him in for two years is yeah. not a big deal. I think he just needs to adapt to that style of yeah. the English league. You know, it's so much different than the Italian league. So. But if it takes him a whole year, yeah, then they've wasted a year, exactly. and he's That's, just a year older. Exactly. So signing a 34-year-old, uh, it's, yeah. it's a risk. Yeah, it's iffy. It yeah. is a risk. <laughs> So now, moving on. Yeah, so we're, we're going to talk about U.S. men soccer just, just for a tab. We'll talk about them later in the show about their game. But they hired Ernie Stewart as the GM. Right. Now, I'm excited about it. I was a big Ernie Stewart fan, fan when he right, was playing. He played, yeah. And I have been saying for decades that that's what we need. We need yeah. someone who's come up as a player right. to become a coach. Now, obviously... You know, as you know, players don't always make great coaches. Right. And and him, he's just a GM, so he's not the actual coach. For those of you that don't understand, he's going to hire a coach. Right. So he's going to see over oversee a lot of stuff. Right. And the interview that I saw him in with Taylor Twelman is is he Taylor Twelman asked him if he's going to dictate the style of play, and right. he is. Right. He's going to dictate the style of play, so he's going to bring someone in who's got to see things right. the same way as him. So when you're bringing a new GM and it's a player, it's not he just doesn't have to know you know how to run a team. He needs to know what style of team is best for the U.S. because right. it's what they need. Which I thought it's what they were doing when Kobe Jones was helping out the Galaxy, and yeah. I thought he was getting trained. Maybe not just about being a coach with Galaxy, but maybe even for the national team. Yeah, I was hoping that too. Yeah, I, I really yeah. like when the players that come through because they know the U.S. You know mentality. Right. They, right. They've been there. They've done it. They know how to play. They have played right. all those uh, international games, which you know lots of experience for them. Right. You know, Lala talks about that all the time when he's commenting. Yeah. You know about when he had those you know, years in Mexico, all the you know experience that he got playing outside of the, the states. You know, it's something that these players bring into the right. to the team. And one of the big names. Uh, that he's thinking of as a coach is Burhalter from the Columbus Crew, right? Who again was a player for the U.S. Right. So to me, I'm excited about it. Yeah, and Columbus Crew is doing great things. I mean, yeah. he's got a lot of players that are going playing into the national team, so that's right. great. You know, it's something that's going right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, so for our next major topic, we are going to make a phone call and see if we can get coach Sonia on board now coach Sonia was somebody who I coached uh, with for years as the uh, when I was running the girls program here I also coached her daughter I miss right. Kara shout out to Kara by the way <laughs> she was she was a not only a phenomenal individual but a great soccer player and uh, we we obviously miss her so we're gonna get Sonia on the line here and discuss our women's game against China which we have a second game for today. Yes. So when you watch the show, it may not be, it'll be after that Hello? game. Hey, Coach Sonia. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. Welcome to our Soccer Talk show. It's so happy to have you on the show. So excited. <laughs> well, thank you. I'm very honored to be a part of your show. Uh, Coach Kame is here with me. And, uh, hey, Coach Kame. Hey Sonia, how, how are you? <laughs> great, thank you. It's great, it's great having you on our show. Thank you, what a pleasure. Okay, so we, we're going to talk here about our women's versus China. 
So, okay. what's your overall assessment of how they played in that game? Well, just to be totally honest, I was a little underwhelmed by their performance. I just didn't feel they were very connected, and um, I don't know, I just didn't see as much hustle as I would have liked to see. I agree there. Yeah. What did you think of uh, any new players? Anybody impressed you? Um, actually, I, I really liked the, um, I'm now going to mess up McCaskey. Uh -huh. McCatskill? Yeah. 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 She's a young player. She's 21 years old, um, and she played right forward. So, what is it about yeah. her that you enjoy? Well, I liked her tenacity. She was really in the mix a lot. I liked her. Uh, she had some really nice passes, and she seemed like she really knew where to be. And I, I was, I was kind of watching her because she was new, and uh, yeah, I, I was impressed by her myself. What did you think of Davidson, the center back? She's 19, and she, she had a great long ball distribution, but what did you think of her as maybe a, as a long-term player? You know, I, I, I don't know. I, I, again, I, I didn't see, I, I really didn't see her do anything spectacular. She right. just, in my opinion, she showed um, I, I I'm kind of excited frankly, to see tonight and see if, you know, the mix is different and, and if I can see some different highlights because I was, when you told me that we were going to talk about it, I was like, oh, I could have to fight something to <laughs> <laughs> they, they also had a player, Zerboni, who's oh. 31 years old. Yeah. And this was the first time she's been on. But the thing that we will all understand, she's a South Cal Blues player. Yes. So it, it was nice to see someone from our local area um, playing there. Now, That's for sure. Yeah, so uh, another person who's been there a while, I, I want to get your take on her, Crystal Dunn. Here's what I, here's what I have on Crystal Dunn. She's deadly okay. and dangerous out of the back. In just the first half alone, she was inside their six and put three balls in between the PK spot and the six-yard line. And then obviously in the second half she almost scored off of that header. Right. So for her, and that's when she moved up as a forward. Right. How do you feel about Crystal Dunn with that versatility? Oh, I like her on the field. She makes stuff happen. I I was uh, actually was just mentioning those crosses. There was no one at the end of them. Right. Uh, that's kind of the the you know there wasn't a lot of attacking the box, and so I was feeling like she was doing a lot of work and not a lot of reward. But I like her. I, I, I like her. She, she can play outside back and, and do the you know, transition well, or she can play forward. I, yeah, she's good all over. She is dangerous. You know, she reminds me a lot of Michaela. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we used yeah. to have a player named Michaela who, was, who could play pretty much anywhere. She was like that as well. Yeah, I just always have one, always looking to be, you know, find space and, uh, yeah, and just trying to make stuff happen. So yeah, she, she's good. I, I'm glad she's part of the lineup. Go ahead. So um, there were some players that weren't there. Larue, Cindy Larue, who's, <laughs> Larue, yeah, who's back and, yeah. and and she's healthy. Uh, Tobin Heath. Right, that's right. She wasn't there. Yeah, I know you love Heath. So I, I love Heath. <laughs> um, now, now Kelly O'Hara, who scored in the right. in the World Cup, she was injured. Um, yeah. So she wasn't there, and then uh, the the one you like, Coach Kimmy Mallory yeah. Pugh, who came from the Mexican. No, that was that's Sophia. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Mallory Pugh, Pugh, yeah, the young one. Uh, she's not there. What do you think of Mallory Pugh? I, I when I saw her play before, I, I really appreciated her. I thought she did well. She had a good presence about her. And then um, some of the bigger names, uh, Lloyd. Of course, yeah. Her and, yeah. and Kristen Press came in off the bench along with Mewis yeah. and Long. Right. Um, yeah. And those girls are starters. So overall, our, mm -hmm. our team, the U.S. women, are super deep. Right. Yeah, well, that's good to see because it's just it's, when you're playing. Yeah, you know, we got a whole year ahead of us yet, so it's nice to know that she's got some options and can mix it up a bit for these friendlies and see who who can play well and their what position to put them in. Right. Now, Coach Kamei likes a player there. Yeah, I was I was talking to Coach Eaton 
about Sofia who came from the national from Mexico's national team. She impressed oh, yeah. me. I like I like how she was crossing the ball, you know, looking for whether it's Lloyd or whoever's in the middle, Lopino on, on the in the back. Um, I mean, those balls that she was sending was you know they were she created some really dangerous plays for us. So I was happy to yeah, see I everything noticed, she did. Yeah, I noticed her as well. Yeah, she's a good addition. She's yeah. young, right? Yes, yeah, she's 20, well. She's twenty-five. Twenty-five, so still. So she's still young, right? Especially the women's game. Yeah. yeah. So for for our women's upcoming, obviously we have tonight's game on uh, ESPN, and then we've got the tournament of nations, oh, uh, right. which is going to have Japan, Brazil, and Australia, and that's going to be July 26th, 29th, and August second on FS1. What do you think our chances of beating those three teams are, Coach? Oh, I really think we have a good chance. I, you know, I, I think we match up well against uh, each of those teams, and and I think it'll be a challenge. We'll have to work hard, but I, you know, I, I, I think if she tweaks a few things, if, if Jill can tweak a few things, I think that we have a really good chance. Yeah, and you know, we're still supposed to be the favorites for this tournament, so we'll yeah. see. Yeah, and yeah, then I'd like to see. I, I think I'm just going to say, just as an overall, um, I have you know, now that I live in Chicago, I have to say a little bit about Julie Earth. I, you know, oh, yeah. I, mm -hmm. I think that expanding, expanding her, uh, her role, I think is a good thing. And I think as we go into that, she just is a real solid addition. Oh, and, I definitely uh, agree there. Yeah. Yeah, Julie Ertz is a great player. And then, yeah. and then obviously we have the World Cup that's going to be coming July 7th, 2019. And I've got some teams that are already in it. France, Brazil, Chile, China, Japan, South Korea, and Thailand. And then the U.S. qualify for that tournament October 4th through the 17th. So, okay. you know, it, we like you said, we have some time. Um, we've got a couple more months until qualifying. Uh, hey, Coach, did you get a chance to watch the U.S. men versus France? You know, I always saw the highlights. Okay. Um, yeah, I've been I've been watching some of these. I'm I'm really excited for Thursday. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're excited for that as well. We're excited because we can see what we're going to be able to do for the next World Cup. You know, they're getting yeah. ready, so. We, it's yeah. it's our thing now that we got to qualify oh, for the next one for sure. It's a good matchup. I'm sure you're, Coach Kimmy. I'm sure you're especially looking forward to Sunday. Oh, of course, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Coach Sonia. It was so happy to have you. I'm so happy that you were available, and um, yeah, we will definitely want to do this again. Okay. Well, it's been talking with you guys. I think it's fantastic. I watched your show already, and you're doing a really good job. Good job, guys. Thank you very much. We 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 are happy to be doing this show. We, we're happy to have you on our show. So hopefully, right. anytime you're you're welcome to come and you know be in our show anytime you want. Yeah, and and if you ever get out this way, as uh, you know, to come and visit, you know, maybe we'll be a perfect timing when we're taping, and you can just step on in. Okay, well, thank you for the invitation. <laughs> All right, son, we will talk to you soon. Okay, take care. Take care. Take care. So that was Coach Sonia. Yeah? Oh, I like her so much. She's yes. awesome. Okay. I love the players she picked. Yeah. <laughs> so as far as uh, the men's games, we touched a little bit on the U.S. men versus France. Right. Um, you know, I, I really was thinking like everybody else that this is going to be a blowout right i mean france played exactly. their starters that they're going to play and they're one of the yeah, favorites to win the i world mean Cup. all those weapons oh. i mean you got um Giroud, you know who had those headers who missed yeah um, um who else was there um, mbappe mbappe those shots that he was taking from you yeah. know from the outside Griezmann. they took a lot of shots i mean they have a lot of weapons and you know i think that i was telling you this before uh, the star for the U.S. had to be Stefan. Yeah, I mean, he saved us from a lot of, you know, um, just from all those shots that they were taking. I mean, he had so many people taking shots from the outside of the 18, you know, so, and he was all over the place, you know, so. Yeah, and it, it was such a young team that I didn't even know half the guys. I hadn't right, even heard exactly. of half the guys. And, you know, at first I figured, okay, they're going to play so defensively. Right. But when you look at the game as a whole, even though they were being dominated, they right. weren't 
trying to play defensively. Right, right. You know, they were trying to create things. They were trying to get up there. Obviously, I'm, I've always been a Bobby Wood fan. I definitely right. think he should start. Julian Green, who made the, the, the sweet goal, goal. Yes. I mean, yes. a, a one-touch volley. And, and it's true what they said. If he would have taken a second touch, it he would have not had the chance to take that shot. So he did it perfectly. And he... You know, he came in a few years ago when Klinsman was there. Right. And then somehow fell out yeah, of favor. Yeah, exactly. You know, so the, I'm glad that he's back. Uh, Pulisic, who wasn't there, everybody talks about you got to build the team around him. Right. Well, why isn't he there? Exactly. Is it his club that's not letting him? Is he injured? I can't find anything on it. I wonder, though, if he has to, anything to do with the fact that we didn't qualify, so he's feeling down like a... Uh, Could be. You know, so, because he's one of the players that was missing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But I was excited, though. I was excited. You know, one of the things that you, you, you were talking about being defensive, it's not so much that they were being so defensive. It's just that France gave it all they wanted. You know, yeah. they were attacking us. Yeah. They were taking shots from everywhere. They were going from outside, inside, and anywhere. You know, so our players did a great job. I mean, talk about all those young defenders. Right. You know, they were doing everything they could. I mean, there was that goal. But, of course, you know, that's... That's a mistake that you come, that you make when you're that young, yeah. but you learn from it. So it's yeah. better to have it now in a friendly game right. than when you're qualifying to go to the World Cup. So it's a learning experience for them. And if, if you didn't get to see the game, it was in France, right. and we had never scored there. So right. scoring was the first thing that was uh, a history. And we scored making. first. And we scored first. We were up in the, the, the 70th right. minute. Yeah. So it took France a while to break us down. So. It, it shows that that they worked hard, that the kids right. worked hard. Right. So we, we appreciate that for sure. Yeah, especially with so many young players. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, now we're gonna talk about World Cup. It's only two days away. And by the time you're actually watching this show, maybe it already started. It may have. Yeah. <laughs> um, so our first game, the host country Russia versus Saudi Arabia. What do you think on that? Well, you know. Russia being the host of the World Cup has to win this game. You know, they're playing Saudi Arabia, which is not a strong team, it's not a European team, and it's not a South American team. So they have a really good chance of winning this one. You know, Saudi Arabia, not as strong as they were, so I'm giving it to Russia. Yeah, I, I agree. I think they have to win it. It, it, it's one of those things where it's just you have to win. You don't have a choice. Right. I mean, if I was the manager of the team or the coach of the team, that's what I'd be telling the guys. Exactly. I'd say, this is the opening of the World Cup in our own home country. And the whole world is watching. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got to win it. Exactly. So next, we have Egypt versus Uruguay. Without Salah, uh, I just, I don't see how Uruguay cannot, with, with Suarez, you know, Cavani. and Cavani, I, I don't see how they cannot score right. on, on Egypt. Exactly. Even if it's a high-scoring game, I think Uruguay is going to be able to outscore them. Right. And I think uh, Egypt knows that this is their one game, that, you know, that they can give up and concentrate more on the other games, where hopefully they'll have Salah by then. Who knows, though? The coach may surprise us and say, he's playing this game. You never know. You know, it's the World Cup. But I wouldn't play him. I wouldn't play. I would That's save him risky. for the next two games because if you want to go to the next round, you want to save him for the, the two other games where you know you have to. Right. Right. So on this one, you know they can give this one to Uruguay. Exactly. Okay, and then we have Morocco and Iran. Not really an exciting <laughs> game right. unless you're from those countries. Exactly. So it's going to be a sleeper. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, Morocco did win. I think it was Estonia they played. They won. Three to nothing or three to one over the weekend, so they can't score. Um, but Iran, you know, they're not bad in World Cups too. They right. they make challenges. Right. So although they're you know representing two different areas, one's an African team, true. One's the Middle East, so they're going to be fighting for that. Yeah. <laughs> right. Next we got Portugal versus Spain, which is a huge, huge opening game. This is this is the kind of game you would see in a quarterfinal or exactly. semifinal. <laughs> so it's going to be huge. You know, and it's a fun game. You got you know, Ronaldo versus his old teammates. You know, yeah, yeah. it's gonna have go, uh, have to go against Ramos. You yeah, know, you know how he feels about that. So, you know, it's a great, great game for Portugal and Spain. Yeah, and uh, Piquet he left training on Monday. Yeah, 
with so the that's a concern. So that's a concern if he's going to play this game or not. I, I think I, I think that. I think Ronaldo's looking at that going, well, at least they don't got to go against him again. Right. Because he has to deal with him when they put, when Real Madrid plays, you know, right. uh, Barcelona. But he does so. have to worry about Ramos. He know. does have to worry about <laughs> Ramos, who he sees every day in training. But yeah, that could, could be an advantage. <laughs> too, so, yeah. yeah, but remember, you got we're not talking clubs here. We're talking nations. Right, right. So there's that pride thing. You That's know? true. That's true. <laughs> okay, our next game, which I think is a sleeper between France and Australia. Now, we, we talked about France with the U.S. If Australia took something away from that U.S. friendly, they're, they, they, if they do what the U.S. did, they've got a chance yes. of at least getting yes. a tie or a win out of this. And we know how Australia did in the last World Cup, so they have a chance. Mm -hmm. You know, France is a young team who's hungry, and it's one of the favorites to win it. But, you know, they're still young, so we'll see. And France always has problems in the big tournaments behind the scenes. Yes. Bickering between coach yeah, and players. It's play. already started. It's already started. <laughs> so Australia, you could take advantage of that possibly. Right. Next, we got our next game, which is Argentina versus Iceland. Another sleeper. Right. I mean, the way Iceland's been playing, you know, they, mm -hmm. and Argentina's got to travel way farther. Right. Now, Iceland should be used to the climate. Right. I, it would be a devastating loss. Right, for Argentina. Argentina, exactly. Especially because, you know, it's probably Messi's last World Cup. We talked about this right. before. You know, all, a lot of players in Argentina who are all who is the last World Cup, they're going to try to win this because they want to finish first so they don't have to play another first place in the next round. Do you think that they want to win for Messi? I think it's a pride thing. You know, yeah. when you wear your national jersey, you representing your nation, it's not just about one player. It's about a team, so they're not just doing it for him. It's you know some of them. It's their last chance. Also, yeah, it's not just true. about let's win it for him. It's let's win it for us because it's our last World Cup. Right, know? right. Okay, our next one we've got Peru versus Denmark. I know you're rooting for Peru. Right, because I told you before, Peru, a young team, hungry team. Peru hasn't been in the World Cup in so many years, and so they're gonna be hungry. And you know. Like you said before, the traveling part is going to hurt them. But, you know, this is a team that qualified for the World Cup, you know, leaving teams out like Ecuador, like Paraguay, out of the World Cup. Yeah. So this is a big deal for them. So I'm, I'm rooting for Peru on this one. Now, Denmark beat, beat Mexico over the weekend. Right. So, you know, that's huge to, to beat right. a team of that caliber. So I don't know. Uh, <laughs> we'll see. And then we got Croatia versus Nigeria, which is another tough game. I know. think it's very tough. Right. Uh, I, I mean, I, I think Croatia is going to win it because they've got the talent and the experience. Right. But Nigeria, strong, powerful, athletic team. African teams. Yes. Yeah, they just they're scary. They'll wear you out. They're They'll wear you out. You know, you look at some of the teams that played them before in the World Cup. They get worn out when they play the African yeah. teams because their athleticism is just what it's what's you know. That keeps them in the World Cup. Keeps you know they keep coming back because of that. You know they they may not may not have what some of the other nations have, but they have those players that are great athletes that yeah. you know, they just fight and fight the whole game through. They just got to work on their technique. Yeah. So their so their touch is better. But they can wear you out. They can. Okay, our next one we've got Costa Rica versus Serbia. I think Serbia is going to take this, but then again, what Costa Rica did right. for who knows? Exactly. I mean, you look at what they, you know, people were saying about them in the last World Cup. Some people even thought that they weren't going to come out of that group, and yeah. they finished first in that group. You know, they'd be big teams, so, you know, this could be the surprise. And even though they lost their last uh, warm up game, they didn't have their star, Ryan, you know, Ryan, Ryan Reese. Ruiz. So <laughs> old. Exactly. <laughs> he, I keep hearing that name. I'm like, oh, this guy should have retired years ago. Exactly, which is what, <laughs> you know, same thing with Mexico with, uh, uh, what's his name? Um, oh, I can't think of his name. The defender that played for Barca. Uh, anyway, let's go back, which is actually our next game, which is Mexico versus Germany. Another big game, very big, because if Mexico were to squeak out a win against right. Germany, who's kind of unsure right now because of the players they've left off right. and stuff, I mean, that would be a huge upset. Right. And, you know, there's a big uh, thing going on with Germany right now, but the same problems are happening with Mexico. I mean, they, yeah. Mexico comes out of a loss right now. 
you know, nobody knows what's going to happen with them. You know, who should be playing, who should be starting. There's all kinds of things going on, you know, behind the scenes. So this is going to be an interesting game. Yeah. You know, Germany and Mexico. Especially, you know, you, you're playing the team that just won the last World yep. Cup. Yep. You know? Okay, our next game, we've got Brazil versus Switzerland. Now, obviously, you know, Brazil should win this game. Probably a team that's favored to win the whole tournament. Yeah. <laughs> I mean... You know how Neymar handles under that line. Right. You know the 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 lights and everything. Everybody's it's all Neymar, Neymar. It's it's his team. But then again, you know it's it's still Brazil. Yeah. You know Brazil has got that pride. It's the one team that's won the World Cup outside of the Americas. Mm -hmm. So they have a lot going on for themselves, and also the fact that they, you know, they finished first qualifying in in South America. They have such great talent, you know, they have so many strikers, they have great defense, they have great midfielders. I mean, I can see why they're favorites to win this yeah. World Cup. So, next we move on to Sweden versus Korea. Which, I, I would say Sweden. Sweden, gonna right. gonna take this one, uh, they knocked Italy out. Right. And even if they play that kind of style, whether or not, it's not necessarily the most exciting thing right. to watch. A win to win, <laughs> right? You know? And Korea hasn't done a lot in yeah. the last few World Cups, so you know they haven't had anything since their own World Cup in '02. Right. Our next one should be simple. We got Belgium versus Panama, and and, and not having Hazard there. Hazard limped off in a friendly over the <laughs> weekend, so you know he's hurt. But I still think Belgium's just got way too many right players, and we don't know. You know, limping off doesn't necessarily mean he's out. Right. So we don't know. He may be playing, he may not be. You remember Panama also lost a player. Yeah. And they he's out. And then and they're new to the World Cup. Exactly. They've got a long way to travel and Yeah, they it's... they're actually well this is one of those teams that they're just happy to be there. Yeah. You know, exactly. they haven't been on the World Cup. So exactly. this is uh, something exciting for them. But playing someone like Belgium on their first opener, it's gonna be tough for them. Yeah. Next we have Tunisia versus England. Again, and another one where England should easily win this game. Right. And obviously, as EPL fans, right. you know, we know the England players. And you know, the, the English people know that, you know, they have one of the best leagues in the world. There's no reason for them not to win games like this in the World Cup. And, right. you know, they got to have that pressure on because England has to perform better in the World Cup. You know, people have been expecting them to go a lot further for a long, long time, especially with their history. Oh, yeah. So England has to do better in this World Cup. They have to win games like in Tunisia. All right. Okay, and then our last group, we've got the team you're supporting here with the shirt, Colombia versus Japan. Right, and you know, Japan doesn't have a lot of history right now. They, they qualify well, but you know, playing Colombia, a team that was a great surprise in the last World Cup, has all the players, most of those players back. You know, Falcao was back, which yeah. he didn't get to play the last World Cup, right. which is their top scorer. And you have James Rodriguez, who was the top scorer for the last World Cup. That's what put him on the map. Exactly, who gave him those tickets to go to Real Madrid, to go to Bayern, to win a championship with Bayern, right. all these different things. So Colombia has, you know, people are expecting a lot from them, especially their own country. You know, people are saying Colombia better do well in this World Cup. Right. And we know your wife from Exactly. There, right? My wife, even that shout out to my wife, you know, Mira from, she's actually in fact in Colombia right now. Oh. So are well, we going to see if we can watch the World Cup there? <laughs> that would be interesting. Okay. Next we have Poland versus Senegal. Again, another African team who could, you know, make some waves by beating a, a team yeah. like Poland. You know, it's one of those that, you know, put in the World Cup off balance, you know, by bringing, you know, players that are so athletic. Again, yeah. same thing. But then you got Poland, who hasn't been in the World Cup in so many yeah. years. You know, they're hungry to be there. They want to be uh, a team from uh, a power, powerhouse like they used to be in Europe. You know, they're yeah. not the same like they used to be before. People expect a lot from them now that they're back. We'll see. This is the World Cup where they can show what they have. So that's our show for today. Please, when you watch the show, hit that subscribe button so that you can actually get notifications of our new shows that are coming out. And put it on Twitter, put it on Facebook, whatever social media is out there, just so we can get more than 10 viewers. 
I mean, <laughs> if we don't, that's okay. We're still loving this, doing the show. We like it. But it would be fun to see if we can get a few more people out there. We're planning on our next show being on June 26th, which is when we're going to tape it. Right. Okay, so we'll get it out a few days after that. So it'll be right at the end of all the group stages. There will be a few group games left, so we won't be able to tell you too much about that next round. Right. Um, but we will have ideas on some of those. And also, it's when you subscribe, try to see if you can leave us a comment. Yeah. Maybe what you think is different, maybe you think a different team should win you know, a certain game or whatever, give us your opinion, tell us what you think. You know, it's not just about us, what we think. Right. We want to know what you guys think. I agree. Right? That's it. All right, so that's our show for today. Have Thank a good you. one. Have a good day.